Uh, Heather June Gibbons is the author of the chapbook Flyover from Kew Avenue Press. Her poems appear in journals such as the Boston Review, Gulf Coast, Forklift, Ohio, the Southeast Review, the Cincinnati Review, Indiana Review, Blackbird, New Ohio Review, and Drunken Boat. A graduate of the Iowa Writers Workshop, uh, she has been the recipient of fellowships and awards from Vermont Studio Center, the Fine Arts Work Center in Provincetown, and the Academy of American Poets. She is a lecturer in creative writing at San Francisco State University. Please welcome Heather. so much. This is great and it's really, you know, the best thing that can ever happen is when you get so caught up in the reading and you're just like being a listener that you like kind of forget what you're reading <laughs> yourself, you know, and I've, I've had that wonderful experience oh, this yeah. evening. It's just, uh, yeah, what a wonderful, wonderful body of work to follow. It's an honor. Um, okay, so I'm going to uh, just freak myself out and read mostly really new raw things just for fun, you know. Um, this one's not so new. And it, it takes its title from a, a Scientific American article online, which I am definitely guilty of like doing weird internet k-hole <laughs> searches where I'm like, read it. and this was actually, yeah, the title, The Brain May Disassemble Itself in Sleep. Oh. So I was drawn. I clicked. I did it. <laughs> the brain may disassemble itself in sleep. Every night, neural connections unravel a little as your mind edits itself and resets, making way for recently formed memories to replay and become more sharply etched. You dream of a lanky lawyer in a flawless dress shirt who smells faintly of hotel lobby and of ham. <laughs> Not to mention the one about teeth. Julia says teeth mean control, but you're pretty sure they mean death. <laughs> Either way, it's not good. To dream about your mother in the tall, wet grass, her arms folded as if to say, what are you waiting for? And when Julia appears in tattered lace with a green ribbon around her wrist and tells you her terrible secret, you are happy because she finally told you what you already knew. It is not enough to say we are transparent things. The sun sets in the cracks of a haggard snowy peak. The captain cracks his knuckles over the intercom. The dog sleeps in cargo, sedate in its crate, while wildfires in the west rage against the blowing dust advisory. Every September, the arctic ground squirrel burrows beneath the tundra to curl up in a nest of lichen and caribou hair. Its heart slows, its lungs slow, its temperature dips below, freezing, and electrical signals vanish in many areas of its brain. But don't worry. Soon it will awaken and return to the surface of the earth, hungry and eager to mate just as you will wake up with creases on your face, on a plane still circling airspace, waiting for permission to land, just in time to see clouds unraveling magenta, your brain nicely blank but for vague pulses of light. Mm -hmm. um, okay, this has some word like, this is another sort of Googling it's kind of embarrassing, but like it's good to admit it. Yeah. It's, we all do it. Yeah. Uh, it's called. So I live in Outer Richmond, so I hear the foghorns a lot. That's my banter in between. <laughs> <laughs> so my strong suit. <laughs> so far gone. I don't know anything about the speed of sound except that subsonic and supersonic sound like garage rock and maybe something about waves, the way sound changes over distance marred by a million echoes, 
scraped smooth as beach glass through invisible interactions with space. The most beautiful songs are the ones you can barely hear because they are so far away, so far, so gone, which is the sound of foghorns on the Golden Gate intoning their own requiem with each de delayed two-tone as satellite-guided GPS may soon eliminate the need for them. I wonder what interval that is in music theory, which I flunked freshman year. <laughs> Foghorns, Golden Gate with light traffic noise, is a sound effect you can buy online. And it's weird to hear it at the bus stop on a morning with perfect skies. Everyone looking around to see whose phone that is. <laughs> we are lost. Even the foghorn itself is now automated. A laser beam shot out to sea, a sensor that talks to a computer. Like most people, the sound of the foghorn is determined by the landscape through which it must travel, often overwhelming in extreme close-up, though dear when heard from far away. Um, so sometimes I give my students um, assignments like, you have to imitate this poem. You know, easy assignment to become for those of you that are going to teach you or are teaching. <laughs> um, imitate one of the poems. And then sometimes I make myself actually do the assignments. So this is me making myself do one of the assignments, which was to imitate the wonderful, venerable Maxine Chernoff. Um, mm. <laughs> we've heard of her. Uh, yeah, so the, my students read her book here, and she has a wonderful poem, and lots of wonderful poems, but one of them is called Heard. Um, and so this is me imitating her. And the first, the, or the title is a line from her poem. You must practice forgetting until it is a science. You were a seagull snapping up popcorn dropped by a child. You are melting in urgency in a waiting room. You are flashing a low battery signal in the dark. What sounds like someone chanting om turns out to be someone vacuuming upstairs. You <laughs> sense an irony. It is your useless superpower. <laughs> you were a mean measure of yourself before you became mere tambourine player before you started life tweeting grief. You know you should have never taken off your ring. You call it bewilderment, stickiness. You know what they will call it. You feel like a wish on an errant eyelash. You should have cracked the car window so it didn't fog. You could have cut a sharper figure out of scraps. But you were a bauble of surrender, a blurred gesture, no matter or material, no shadow cast. Mm. And I have two more. All right, so I had a baby. <laughs> and they're all these like <laughs> big occasion like occasional poems, like Home for a bride on her wedding day, and like, you know, like elegies and odes, and there's no name, there's no like, thing for a birth poem, which is super annoying. Um, but also, it's a really hard, for me at least, I'm not a narrative poet, like, it's hard for me to write about stuff like that. So, this is me trying to write birth poem, um, and finding that I just have to tell the story, which makes me really anxious. All right. Uh, Parnassus. You were born in a hospital on Parnassus Street, which, like the Greek mountain, is mythic steep. A place of learning, home to many muses. You were born, and everything got so literal. I moaned and lowed on all fours, all, all fours like the animal I actually am, in a curtained cubicle, literally the size of a closet, and you slid out in undulations of pain so extreme as to be literally unimaginable, now that my body can no longer remember them, blocked, perhaps, by a biological imperative, basic and deep as the way I sobbed when they took you away, and fought to see you right then, even as I'd lost so much blood 
that doctors insisted I could not, that I shouldn't even be able to stand, let alone walk, the length of the hall to you, which I did. Then we rested in an actual supply closet, <laughs> waiting for them to unplug you, so tiny your torso fit in your father's hand, and it was, well, literally draining to become maternal mammal, your mouth rooting for a nipple before you were even awake. Literal, meaning exactly as stated, factual, simple, every cliche turned true. I cannot tell this any other way. But when we finally got you out of there in what felt like a great escape, down, down from the machine hum mountain on an unusually sunny day in a city known for summer fog, everything turned metaphor. I saw you everywhere, every flower so exactly like your puckered face, your fist tucked under your chin, opening and closing reflexively like a barnacle siri, tiny feather waving slowly underwater as each moment slowed to an eternal present, your face always before me, even when I close my eyes and the barely there weight of you, your soft head, grotesque, bruised, pressed conical by the sheer force by which I pushed just in time, literally minutes before they would have cut you out of me. <clears throat> Some people like straightforward is really makes me really nervous. <laughs> it's like personal, my nipples in that poem. <laughs> I just realized that. You know, you read something for the first time and you're like, oh. Okay, so the last poem is also embarrassing, but in a very different way. Um, so I, I have a, I love listening to really bad uh, dance anthems in my car. <laughs> like I just, I don't go dancing anymore. I have like a car seat in the back, but I'll, yeah. Anyway, this is kind of along those lines. It's called Anthem. <clears throat> Anthem. Every pop song is just another song about California. The waves, yeah, the waves. Girls in the boom boom room shaking ass in the smoke machine smoke like they're dancing in a YOLO cage. Dudes singing along and bobbing their heads in midlife crisis cars like they're all alone in traffic. Blonde girls bouncing on dorm room beds, voguing a looping dumb show on Vine for faraway boys with leathery with leather, with lathery torsos, and the chorus goes, high, low, blow pop, sugar, sugar, shake. <laughs> Every club song is lonely, is a song about longing generally. Every song about California dreaming is sad, the way a solo cup rolling on its side under a palm tree. <laughs> and neon, like palms right here is just another way to say, take me to the bridge. Let that big 4-4 four, four box store beat build to the bridge which always takes you back to the same chorus, surge of blood away, away from the brain. Let me come back to beats like little boxes, where I can have all the big feelings. Me, always with the big stupid feelings, and the kids jumping on beds in a scream-along, they have all the feelings. And boys with the spins holding their heads, they have all the feelings, flare guns shooting off. For anyone, anonymous, interchangeable as bodies on the dance floor, predictable as let's stay for just one more, as though that would be enough. As though we'll never have to come down to the verse, that old story, so much explaining. Let's just let the beat drop and the vocoder vocals soar, dance so close to the speaker, the bass hurts our kidneys so loud we can't even hear what the singer is saying like you only live once doesn't also mean that you are dying mm. Thank you.